Programmers do kung fu fighting To ride good fast as lightning So, let's talk about the next requirement. Go back to the tests. Um, next thing is that I want my calculator to throw an exception if this number sequence contains um, a negative number. And since this requires me to assert exceptions, or ah, not yet, let's, let's start with the, the easy one. Um, expected exception is illegal argument. Girl argument not meant exception class. This should work. Public void throws if negative number or throws on negative number. So I can just exercise this string calculator and say sum uh, minus three, for example. Going to execute that test fails because exception was expected but not thrown. Let's fix that behavior. So I want an exception to be thrown if the numbers are negative or if there is a negative number. So um, negative numbers I can look for negative number after I did this map to int thing here with the parent parent. So actually I want to reuse this part of the functionality, um, which I'm going to quickly extract into a get number method. So we have get number sum. And now I want to actually check if there is a negative number. So say get number any match number number smaller zero negative number throw illegal new illegal argument exception does that work yes that does work um quick remark about streams i'm aware that i'm currently executing the get numbers twice here. Um, reason is the following. Streams can only be iterated, evaluated once. So um, if I would pull that out into a local variable, say numbers, and then re-execute, the test would fail because uh, it says the stream has already been operated upon and closed. Um, that's why that does not work. So I really have to operate on streams twice or create the stream twice. So let's re-execute the tests. They're working again. Okay. Um, the next requirement, actually, where's my test? Hmm. was not listed. Anyways, um, the next requirement to the test or to this exception uh, thing is actually that the, except, uh, the, the negative number is shown in the exception message. And exception messages cannot be checked by this um, shorthand ex uh, exception ex expectation syntax. So I'm going to use the JUnit rule expected exception. Um, rules are declared by the rule annotation. And um, as I said, what I want to use is expected exception here. Um, exception equals expected exception dot none. So um, Introducing this does not change anything because it basically says for all the tests in this class my expectations uh, is that no exception is thrown. This is the default of course. But I can do the following now. I can say instead of saying expected 
exception up here in the test annotation, I can now say in the test, okay, expected exception, expect illegal argument exception. Rerun, this should change nothing, changes something, initialization error, uh, rule must be public. Okay, sorry, this field must be public, re-execute, so it changes nothing. It's the same test as before, but now I can add an additional expectation here and say expect message is negative number colon minus three. Re-execute and now the test fails, the right exception was thrown, but um, the message was null instead of negative number minus three. So let's implement something like um, something that composes that string or in fact no I don't have to do that right uh, easy solution is say negative number minus three that works okay anyways with the next next test I'm going to have to introduce some more logic so I'm using the green tests to factor this out into an ensure no negative numbers helper which I can extend in the next round. Um, still my test is missing, right? Two, three, single. It's called throws on negative, but it's not there. Interesting. Hmm. Not sure why. Anyways, um, I'm going to write another test that's saying public void throws on negative numbers with all numbers in exception message. So this is going to be quite similar to the test above, only that I expect, let's say, minus 3, minus 5, minus 13 here because I call this with 1, minus 3, 5, um, minus 5 and minus 13. Re-execute the tests and now the message is wrong because it says negative number minus 3 instead of minus 3, minus 5, minus 13. This is uh, expected so let's fix it. Um, for this to work, I need to get all the negative numbers. So I said, so, so I say, get the numbers, and then filter with the with a predicate saying number smaller to zero. So this returns me in stream containing all the negative numbers. And now I want to, um, I could now say. No, actually, actually, I can do that directly. Uh, never mind. So I can do this here. Um, I filter for all the negative numbers, and I actually map them to strings. No, not too long to object with uh, integer to string. I'm going to map map all these ints back to strings. And then I'm using um, collectors, which is basically fold. I'm going to fold all the numbers into a single string by using the collect method and the default implementation collectors.joining with a separator or delimiter, which will join all the strings containing one negative number each to one string where all the numbers are separated by comma. This says nothing, somehow I cannot assign it. Um, uh, this says message here, or negative number sequence rather, right? Message is negative number sequence. So does that 
work? Did I re-execute no, some things? Ah, now it re-executed, so it actually works. And now I would like to optimize this a bit because currently I'm checking for negative numbers and then I'm pulling them all out. So what I'm going to do is pull this to before here and then the if check for negative number sequence is not empty. Re-execute, this still works. And I'm going to pull, uh, to add a new line here. Of course, that still works. So now I'm working, I'm getting all the negative numbers. Um, I'm mapping them to string and joining them together. And if there's no negative number, then this will result in the empty string. And then not throw an exception. And in case there's at least one number, I get that in the string, the negative number sequence, so it's not empty. So I throw the exception with the respective message. Okay, that's that. One thing I was wondering about um, when looking at that code is if I can by now get rid of this special check here because it's quite far away from the actual uh, logic and I would like to um, keep this special case where it belongs. So if I, if I remove that, then one test is going to fail, right? It's going to fail the empty string test, right? Let's quickly think that through. If input is empty, then parse input is called with an empty string, so the empty string doesn't start with double slash, so I go in here. String calculator is instantiated with numbers being the empty string. Then numbers is used by the getNumber method, right? Numbers, here it is used. So I should be able to say if numbers is empty, then return um, kind of a null object, so in stream, in stream, why is this an interface here? Is, is this really an interface? In stream, empty. Right, this is an interface. In Java 8, there's methods on interfaces now. Wow, strange things. Um, else, array stream, uh, stream of should work, right? Yes. Stream of number split map to int. That shouldn't be too long, right? 84 characters, I can live with that. So get numbers, that should solve my case. So now I have the distinction between the empty numbers case in the get numbers method. And I like that much better than having it down here because now it's really close to where it belongs and all the other uh, treatment is the same. Programmers do Kung Fu fighting. Red good fast as lightning